Does the internet really need another how to make mashed potatoes video? Probably not. And in the, the week leading up to American Thanksgiving, my inbox is absolutely jammed, filled with videos and recipes of how to make the perfect mashed potato. And I think nobody needs another mashed potato video. Um, everybody knows how to make mashed potatoes. Pretty sure they do. Uh, but some people maybe need a little bit of help. And the other thing is, I don't think there is a perfect mashed potato. I think there's mashed potatoes the way you like them. And that's the best way. And so this is a mashed potato recipe that I don't make for ourselves. Jules and I are having mashed potatoes. Um, I'll chop up the potato. I'll gently cook it and then I'll just drain them and toss with a little bit of butter. I don't mash them. I just uh, smash them around in the pot a little bit. It's the way I like it. But this is how I make mashed potatoes when company comes over. Um, you know, you've got a couple of family members and it needs to be done a certain way, so you do it for them and you make them happy. So, into this little pot, I've put a uh, half cup of milk and a half cup of cream. Of course, you could do a full cup of half and half. Uh, I just didn't have it. I'm gonna put this on really low, low heat. You don't want it to boil. You just wanna bring it up to temperature. And I've put in a couple of cloves of garlic and I'm gonna put some thyme in there. And the idea is you just wanna steep those flavors into the milk. And then we will remove the solids before we put it into the mashed potato. Potato choice. Um, pretty important for mashed potatoes. There are essentially two kinds of potato. And I did a job a few years back for the Canadian potato producers, I don't know, the, one of their associations, and we had a number of chefs on set that day. I was shooting, and the chefs were calling this a starchy potato and they were calling like red potatoes or white potatoes, waxy potatoes. And the potato producers got really upset and said, no, this is a dry potato and the other is a wet potato. So whichever way you call it, um, you want these russets. Uh, no, no, I shouldn't say that. I like russets. I like a dry, fluffy potato. When you go to put the milk in and the butter in, it will absorb it all. I find that the waxy or wet potatoes, they don't absorb quite as well. And I'm peeling. Um, I don't peel potatoes unless company's coming. I really don't. Uh, I like the peel on, even in a mashed potato, even though it leaves little brown bits, I like it. So I'm gonna finish peeling these and we'll move on. Now, since I've peeled the potatoes and I've got these great peels here, I'm looking at these as a resource for another dish. So, I'm gonna set them aside in a bowl and I'm gonna tell you to come back for another video and see what fantastic dish I make with the potato peels. Now, the potatoes. Um, you want to cut them up in a way that they'll all cook at the same rate. I mean, that's really important. You don't want some to be so cooked that they're really mushy and some, you know, cooked that they're still hard. Um, so I just cut them into cubes. Some people will slice them. Um, really, it's up to you. What do you feel comfortable with? Just make them fairly consistent and right into the pot. It's time to season the pot. Uh, I put a couple of things in with the potatoes while I cook them. And one of them is dry mustard powder. Um, sometimes I'll use dry mustard powder. Sometimes I'll put horseradish in. Kind of depends what's, uh, what's in the fridge that day, what's in the cupboard that day. But I put it in now and I cook it in with the water and it cooks into the potatoes and you get more flavor into the potato that way, I think. And also salt. Um, don't skimp on the salt at this point. It really is important. 
and also the size of the pot. Um, this pot might be too large, but an early culinary instructor always told me for boiling potatoes, err on the side of a larger pot. Uh, a lot of people will put it in too small of a pot. There won't be enough water. It won't cook thoroughly. It won't cook evenly. So the next thing is just to fill this. And we use cold water. You start out with cold water and just above the level of the potatoes. Now, everyone's instinct, mine included, would be to put this on to a fast, raging boil and get it cooked as fast as possible. Um, an early culinary instructor told me not to do that. Bring it to like a gentle simmer. You don't want to damage the potatoes too much. You don't want to break them up in the water. You don't want them to absorb too much water because they're all jostled around in the pot. You just want to cook them without breaking them down. Uh, and so you just bring it to a gentle simmer. It might take a little bit longer, but I think you'll thank me in the end. I'll see you when these are cooked. All right, I'm gonna say those are done. Turn those off, and just before I drain them, we need to pick how we're going to mash these potatoes. Now, the good old sturdy potato masher, this is what I've used most of my life. This is the go-to tool. This is the one that I would use anytime I mashed potatoes. Um, I see a lot of people, and I used to have an aunt that used a hand mixer. Uh, I'm going to say no to the hand mixer for myself anyway, because I find it just makes the potatoes too gloopy. Um, don't look at the panettone. This isn't the panettone video. We're talking about mashing potatoes. The panettone will come later. Uh, I've seen people put it through a really sturdy strainer uh, or, you know, a mesh strainer. As long as your mesh strainer is strong enough, this is a really good option for something that'll do double duty. Um, but if you've got a relatively inexpensive, cheap, poorly made strainer, I, I wouldn't do it because it'll pull apart here at the top rim, and that's not a good thing. Um, but it still is an option. Uh, which brings us to the thing that I've resisted most in my life, um, and I've had several people come through who swear by this, and they make mashed potatoes as a side for another dish in a video, and I have to admit, the potato ricer is amazing. It's the way to go, so that's what I'm gonna to do today. There we go. So next up is butter. And you could put in pats of butter and mix it in and, and, and it'll melt as it melts in. It'll melt as the warmth of the potato melts it. I like to melt my butter ahead of time and just pour it in a little bit, give it a stir, pour it in a little bit, and give it a stir. Okay, so at this point, we may not need all of the milk. You kind of need to look at it and judge for yourself and taste as you go along. Um, be a good idea before you put in the milk and the cream to give the potatoes a taste and decide if you need any salt. No. Oh, that butter's great. So I put enough salt in the water, it's cooked in, along with that mustard. And I'm going to put in maybe half of the milk to start with, mix it in and see if I need any more. And I strain out any of the solid bits. Uh, you don't want the thyme pieces and the garlic to get into the potatoes. So stir that in. It smells amazing. And how much the potatoes are going to take um, depends on how starchy or dry the potatoes you started with were. Um, how hard you boiled them, how much water they absorbed. So the guideline in the recipe is just that. It's just a guideline until you come to a consistency that you like. I think that looks good. I'm gonna get a tasting spoon. Um, I've got a bucket, a bucket of tasting spoons over here in the corner. Uh, so I just go and get a clean one each time and then throw this into the dishwasher. Okay. So for me, 
That really is perfect. Um, I've got milk left over. Uh, I could put it in, but I think that would make it too soupy. I kind of like the consistency that I've got to right now. I like the flavor. I don't need to put any more salt in it. I had salted enough in the water, but you could add some more if you needed to. Um, some people are going to be screaming, where's the pepper? Um, for me, I don't think it really needs it. But if you wanted to put pepper in, you could put it in now. And white pepper would be perfect in this because then you would get the flavor without the, the little flecks all through it. Um, and, you know, I used garlic and thyme. But there are so many flavor combinations that you could put with this uh, in order to match the flavor to complement what other dishes you're serving it with. Um, you know, garlic and thyme works really well with almost anything. But, you know, the sky's the limit. Put in whatever you want. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, hope to see you again soon.